The learning goal for this video is I can interpolate and extrapolate nonlinear data. Okay, so let's look at some trends here, look at some graphs, and try to figure out what 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 equation would they fit. So the most familiar one you you you're probably most familiar with this graph. So this is the graph of a line. So maybe you've seen this before in the last video. Y is equal to mx plus b, where the slope is positive. This is a positive looking slope. This would be a zero slope and a negative slope. So the first one is going to be where b is positive. This would be y is equal to mx plus b, where b is negative. So now we've just got to figure out these two graphs. Maybe this graph here reminds you of y equals x squared. Um, but the general form is uh, y is equal to ax squared. And in math, you might even see it, see it. You might even have another value on this. ax squared plus b, where a is positive in this case. The last graph is called an inverse graph. So this is an inverse graph, process elimination, that's what's left. And what an inverse graph is, is if I increase x, so I make x 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, um, y is going to decrease. So we can see that with an example. If I just had 1 all over 1, well y would be 1. But if I had 1 all over 10, so I'm increasing x, what happens to y? Well, x is 10, y is now 0 0.1, where it decreases. So as, as I increase x, y, my y values decrease. So this is y equals a all over x. It's called an inverse relationship. Okay, so keeping that in mind, here we have a data set. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and graph that data. And to graph it, I need to remember which, which set goes on which, uh, which set of data goes on which axis. So here's a good, good way of remembering. Your dependent variable, which responds to your change, um, goes on the y value, y axis. And what you manipulate, or the independent variable, goes in your x axis. So remember the word dry mix, specifically dependent y, independent x. That'll help you out. So I'm going to go ahead and graph. You should try to graph this too, and then we'll compare. So I've gone ahead and, and plotted the points, and you can see that there's there's a clear trend. So the trend is going to be now, somewhat along like this in that direction. So if we go back and try to figure out which one does that best represent, well, it's, it's pretty clear that this is an inverse relationship. So it has the form y is equal to a over x. As I increase my x values, look what's happening to these numbers. They're decreasing. So I would say, out of any of these, that's the one that it fits. That's the function it fits. So if we were asked to make a prediction for the distance when the time is 25 seconds, we can go to our data, and it's not perfect, but we look here, 25 seconds, that's where I'm looking. So I can make an approximation for the distance, and we could say, well, it's got to be between 5 and 6, so let's go with 5.75. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approximate this, this coordinate at 25 and 5.75. So the distance is 5.75, and what are the units here again? Looks like it's meters. Is this, predict, is this prediction an interpolation or an extrapolation? So let's remember, extra is outside of the data set. Here we only have data for this, this region. 
inter is inside of our data set, so in between our last data point and our first data point. So is this an interpolation or an extrapolation? Well, we're looking within our data set. Oops. Within our first and last value, so this will be an interpolation. So hopefully from this video, can you interpolate and extrapolate nonlinear data? So we looked at this graph. Hopefully you can do that, and good luck with the practice problems.